Okay, hello. Dr. Nicole Krikora here. Welcome to Mind Body Spirit Virtual Summit 2018. Uh, so excited today. I get to interview Linda Cohn, who is uh, not only someone I look up to, but also a good friend of mine. And I am uh, super excited that in her busy schedule, she could fit us in. So, hi, Linda. Oh, yay. Okay, so I'm going to read a short uh, bio about Linda, and then we'll get started. So Linda Cohn has long been considered a pioneer for women's sportscasters. She has graced our television sets for over 25 years as one of the first full-time female sports anchors. In the illustrious history of ESPN, nobody has hosted more sports centers, male or female, than Linda Cohn. A fixture on Sports Center for nearly a quarter of a century, Linda Cohn reached a milestone with ESPN's signature news and information program on her 5,000th show on February 2016. Wow. Cohn, who had hosted more editions of Sports Center than anyone in the 36 year history of the program, is very humbled for being recognized. In March 2017, Cohn is inducted with many great sportcasters of all time into the NSMA, National Sports Media Association Hall of Fame. How awesome is that? Yeah, tell me. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Huh. Right. Right, right. This doesn't mean it's the end. It doesn't mean that it's okay, your time has come, but just you've been, because in your career, you've already accomplished so many things. So how cool that they could take time to recognize you mid-career. I mean, that's awesome. Right. Sure. Right. 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 You had to work hard for it. 
And well, let's start there. I mean, we can go all the way back. Actually, I have to read something super funny because I know you're totally fine with this. But I looked up you on Wikipedia because I was like, you know, let's just see what they have to say. The export, the export on everybody's life. And the first sentence is, Cone wore very large glasses as a child and faced many self-esteem issues. Dot, da, 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 letter to hockey, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, that's the first sentence? <laughs> I was like, there's, there's so many other things we could lead with. but And then, and you're, you're wearing your glasses for us today. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. No. Right. Wow. Right? Like, who's this teenager playing with our... <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> right. Well, and how interesting, too, that here you are a female in a male-dominated sport as a kid. And how it prepared you to really be a female in a male-dominated era when you first started doing sports casting? I mean, what was the parallel? How did you feel? What, what was it like to walk into this whole dominant? Yeah. No. Yeah. Sheila, Sheila works. She's taking the hit for all women today. <laughs> right, uh, Sheila, that works. Right. Oh, very true.
Ja. Wow. Ja. Ja. Right. Sure, sure. Right. Because it was. It was a man each time that gave you... And but... I think what you said was really important, too. I mean, you really put yourself out there, too. I mean, you were, hey, I'll do this for free to show you my level of passion. And, and the, the best part about it, too, is you really loved, you really love hockey. So, I mean, that helped. I, you played it yourself. You were, you know, it's just like you said, it's, I really love it, too. Why can't I talk about it? Yeah. <laughs> right. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That's so awesome. I mean, because you do. I'm sure you get to know a lot of the players and you get to see maybe like you were saying, some of the other sportscasters get jaded. But at the end of the day, if you're able to separate all of that noise and just watch the game and focus on the game, that's where you find your love again. 
And I think you said something interesting, too, about really starting to be addicted to the highs and the lows. And so take me to a low. Was there, when you even get addicted to that low, then there's that challenge of, all right, I got to bring myself out of it. What are some of the things that you did to do that? I mean, the cool thing about the summit is what we're trying to show a lot of is how the mind, the body, and the spirit are all connected. And, you know, some people, people more spiritual than others, and that's great. But, you know, when your mind is going down, you know, what sort of things is it like exercise for your body that kind of can help or what, what keeps you fueling yourself to reach that next high? Sure. Right. Oh, so important. awesome absolutely Have your back. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, it's so easy, right? Absolutely. That helps you too. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You feel better. Yeah. But I love that you talked about sleep. I mean, it's such an under-discussed subject. It's like, okay, when I feel low, uh, I'm going to see how many more things I can do, do to make myself feel better. I'm going to do this and do that. And it's like, how about just let your body recover and rest and see how you're feeling? I don't know. I just think it's awesome that you mentioned that. So many people, I think, take sleep for granted and don't talk about it. And at least me with my patients, I'm like, are you sleeping? I mean, your body's not going to repair, recover, including your mind, including to help you feel better if you're not sleeping, right? So that's super important. No, not at all. Right. Absolutely. And let's go vice versa. So now when things are going really well and you feel at the top of your game and super confident, how does how does that affect your body? I mean, where
absolutely. Well, and I think when you talk about that external, I mean, it's super human nature to just, when you do, you get that external validation. It feels good. I mean, there, there's no doubt about it, but it's not sustainable, right? But when you are going from a place of maybe low self-esteem and then you're immediately, like you were saying, a goalie position and everybody's looking at you and if the game is won and you're getting external, I mean, it started right from the get-go when you were so young getting that. So, I mean, it's pretty cool that you can still look at that and say, hey, that's great, but that's not that's not everything. I need to figure out how to get that internal validation as well. Otherwise, when does the search stop? Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, you don't see them all staring at you. <laughs> Was I funny? Okay. I thought, you know what? That's awesome because even in some of us when we have these whatever career and it starts feeling repetitive – if you can remind yourself like, hey, this person has never experienced this before or I've never seen them before. They've never seen this before. It does. It keeps you energized. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I love that. Well, and how synchronistic with your career, too. It was like, like you said, one thing led to the next, led to the next. And whether that was. Hmm. 
Right. I love that. I think that's awesome. And that's actually brings me to if you what advice would you give to your younger self? Like the younger self who had maybe just started playing hockey or the younger self that had just got that first job. Like looking back now, is there anything you would say to yourself at that time? <laughs> Wolf. Aww. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Why did you take that in and take it so hard? I, I can't imagine, though, especially being a female coming into this world and you're you're now you're in front of, you know, hundreds, thousands, millions of people. I mean, to be able to hear stuff like that has got to be hard for anybody initially to not let that bother them. <laughs> East to West Coast. No. <laughs> Your thanks, Dad. <laughs> right, right. I love that. Who inspires you now? Or if there was someone who really, as you were going through this whole journey and still trying to find your way and, you know, okay, this opportunity is really great. I mean, who who was inspiring you back then, too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Right. Ah, yeah, right. 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 Perfect. <laughs> right. 
hey, I like it. Whatever gets you going. I mean, and I think that's actually pretty common. If it's, you know, you tend to focus more on the people who are swimming away from you than the people who are swimming to you, right? It's like, what could I have done differently? What could I have fueled? And and there's a balance, I think, with finding, yeah, a balance with finding which one is going to keep fueling you. I like it. How did you I have to ask, you know, because you're super feminine when you're when you're on, you know, you wear these cute dresses and you, you look hot. And you're like, check me out. And how do you balance that feminine with such a masculine world and with people? I'm just so curious. Right. 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 Sure. I love it. Um, do you have any exciting project or venture that you're currently working on that's kind of getting you excited? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds nice. Yeah. And how many people get to laugh the whole time at their job? I mean, that's great. Yeah. Right. That's so great. How long did it take you just for like these people who are kind of starting out and they're they maybe realize that they still care a little bit too much about what other people think? Was it like a defining moment where you're just like, I just don't care anymore? Or was it just like this progression of of, you know what, like when I was 35 or when this kind of happened, I just did. I kind of stopped caring. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. I love it. And I love that you're still so passionate and fired up about what you do. It's so great. 
I mean, if all people could find careers like that. Ah, oh, so distracted. Gosh. Yeah. Gosh, that's awesome. I didn't even think about that, how much things have changed for your line of work where now people just pull up highlights on their phone or on Twitter or whatever, and you can DVR shows now. Doesn't it, you know, people aren't necessarily like waiting – so, wow, yeah, you probably have to actually have a lot more creativity, and good thing you're witty. <laughs> That's awesome. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. I think that's super great. Linda, how do people find you? S social media, your website, Twitter, essentially? Yeah. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Linda Cohn's hearts. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey. Oh. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Well, and thank you for doing this on your, like, last day of your flu. I mean, I know you're... <laughs> Woof. Oh, that flu is crushing people lately. Um, well, and we always love... I always love seeing pictures of Babs. This is a dog. Just... Yeah, okay. <laughs> She's in the corner.
Oh, I love that. And you know, you can't be angry and grateful at the same time. So if you can stay in that gratitude space, especially when you're, why am I sick? Why is this taking so long? I mean, that's awesome. And dogs are so awesome for just that emotional. They feel so much frequency. I know. It took me a little while, you know, the whole, well, you know, my Scorpio sister. We kind of, we kind of like... <laughs> Kind of like our time and our space, and this dog has other plans for my schedule. It's like, okay. Oh. Oh. But that can be applied to <laughs> to so many more things than just a dog, too, right? I mean, that's like can literally be anything, including work. But it's true. Why? But it's easy to get, especially a puppy. I mean. Aww. But I love how, what Babs has given you. It's awesome. I know. Yeah. Right. Right. We'll see. Linda, thank you so much for your time, especially coming off sickness. I get to see you before your job does. I appreciate that. <laughs> Aw, thank you so much, Linda. You're awesome. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye, love.